Exodus 34, 7. Keep in mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgression, and sin, that will by no means clear the guilty. This is an iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. Exodus 20. And we just want to look at verse 5. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. This is an iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And you say, Stiley, you're losing it. We just did this yesterday. Yes, we did. But yesterday's subject was primary to religion. And what I talked to you about the Catholic Church. How families go into families, go into families, go into families, go into families. They stay in the Catholic Church. Today I want to talk about the fathers and mothers also and parents. When they outright sin, and primarily I'm talking to lost people, uh, it'd be sad that this subject, and it probably is so, for a Christian family. But what I want to look at today is, is a thing that I can remember growing up. I grew up in the 70s and 80s. I can remember a, a couple times where, you know, we'd be at a family out and be at a picnic or camping trip, or my father went, had a boat yard where he was with his boat. And I, I can remember there were times where, little Stiley, with his dad, and dad would hand a, hand a can of beer to Stiley, here, take a drink. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Look, look, look at my son, he, he's drinking a beer, sipping a beer. Now I'm telling you what I have learned and what I have seen. What I have seen and what has happened to me in my life is to see, I remember one time that there was a woman holding a baby in her lap and to watch the cigarette ashes fall from her cigarette into the baby. There are babies born today addicted to serious illegal drugs. And that includes marijuana. I know marijuana is illegal, but it's a sin. Just because you legalize it doesn't make it right. There are things that children do today because they learned it from their parents. Mom or dad or Bo, you know, they come home. Hey, you got me a scratch-off ticket. Let's see how much I win. I played my numbers. And the child sees that. And we had a particular message like this a while back. And when you don't watch your mouth and you're cussing and, and perverted things are coming out of your mouth that should not be said, you're teaching your children. And God's going to hold you accountable. And God says, you hate him. I, I hate to say that for a Christian, but what are the children being taught by the parents? Never mind the public school system, never mind the television set and the books. What are the parents teaching the children? There is disregard and rebellion against authorities. And it begins with the pastor, to the police officer that pulled you over, to the judge that you had to appear before. Or even the, the, the child's own teacher, if you get called into a, a meeting with the child's teacher. 
or your boss or your neighbor. And I remember growing up, it's so cute to watch, and not just styling, but, you know, other fathers with their, you know, hey, look at him, he's drinking a beer. I, re I thank God they don't have them anymore. I hope they don't have them anymore. I remember the, the, the funny thing, mom and dad would buy me candy, and there was a candy called Candy Cigarettes. Oh, that was a cute little thing. And then why did my son grow up to be smoking cigarettes? And the biggest question when it comes to that question, well, how did, why did my son turn, how did my child turn out like that? Why is my, my child so much trouble? It's got to be the public school system. It's got to be, you know, you know, the, 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 where, our, our, where we grew up. It has to be a race of people. It has to be a source of income. That my children turn out the way they did terribly. No, it is you, the parent. Well, you know, the public school system. All right. Get a job where you can pay your bills. Don't expect more than what your paycheck can, can bring. The bare necessities and homeschool your child. And when you teach your children not to be content, okay, we, we moved out of our rental house, we got a house now. Well, now we got to get a camper or RV because we got to get away from the house. And now I got to get a boat. Well, this car is not good enough. My children, they grow up, they don't go to church. And when you go on vacations, on Sunday, where you're at a vacation, do you find a Bible-believing church or thereabouts? I've talked to many Christians. And of many Christians I know and I've talked to about as number as the fingers on my hand. They actually, where they went and what they did, they went and found a church where they visited. Everybody else, well, no, no. We... So you can, you're teaching your children you can have a vacation. Well, you say, you know, study, you know, you, you listen, there's, there's Bible study and reading every day in my house. What you think is cute and adorable. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You know? They had to learn it somewhere. Now, uh, now, let me give you a story of Stiley Hayward. Stiley Hayward, first day of high school. I don't know what year that was. 1983, something like that. I don't know what, 15, 16, I don't know. Stiley's at the, at the bus stop. Stiley walks up to the sophomore and says, give me a cigarette. May I try that? I don't know what my words were. There was no peer pressure. They didn't beat me up. They didn't give me a wedgie. I went up to the sophomore and I asked for a cigarette and I was given a cigarette. Where did I learn that from? Learn it from the sophomores? Oh, well, kinda. My dad smoked uh, Tipperello's cigars his whole entire life. My dad, one time, we were going somewhere in, in the truck, 
And I said, Dad, I said, you know, the smoke has really bothered me. He pulled over on Jefferson Avenue, over by New London High School, right by the cemetery. He said, if you don't like it, you can get out. Dad had me around a group of lobstermen and fishermen that smoked. My mom didn't smoke, but I learned to smoke. Though my dad was not there the day that I learned how to smoke, my dad wasn't there, but he taught me. You see, as a mother or father, you teach that child. <gasps> Where did he get that fil filthy word from? <laughs> Where did he get it from? Where did he get the bad attitude? Yeah, where did he get it from? Don't go be playing Adam. Well, you know, God, it was Eve's fault. Don't be doing a, a King Saul. Well, you know, it was it was the, the troops' fault. You know, all the troops, they were fearing all, and I was forced. <laughs> you and David, King David did. Thou art the man. He repented. He got right. But his family was still destroyed. Four of his boys had to suffer. Like I said, there are babies born addicted to illegal, hard, or any soft drugs. Any illegal drugs. And I have seen the pictures of nurses just cuddling those, those poor, pathetic babies born. The sins of the mother. And we are in the generation, been in the generation for a little while. We let our daughters, well, not, not my daughter, but we let our daughters dress up and, <laughs> that is so cute. And she's got her legs showing, she's got her belly showing, she's got her, her shoulders showing, she's got half her breasts showing, she's got her butt sticking out. And then she comes home pregnant, not married. Oh, where did she go wrong? What happened? How about this one? I, I, this is recent. I live in Daytona Beach, Florida. There are people that walk around in their bras and panties. Really? Yeah. But they call it a bikini. A bikini is a bra and panties, and I have seen little children wearing, little girls wearing their bra and panties. Oh, it's a bikini. Really? Why haven't I ever seen anybody wear bra and panties? But they'll wear, I don't know what they call a bikini cup and a bikini bottom. It's the same thing. And this country is raising their, their daughters to be prostitutes. And to a point, this country is raising their, their daughters to be prostitutes without money. They'll do it for free. Matter of fact, the men, yeah, it's prostitutes. The men will give them money. If not, the men will give them money. The government will give them money for every child they produce. That's prostitution. Adultery and fornication. Oh, the, the, the evils of the television. Is adultery and fornication, is it in your relationship? Well, no, I'm faithful to my spouse. All right, Dad. <clears throat> With that little boy, or even the little girl. You who in and fox calling and goggling women. And Jesus said, Whosoever looks upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. You could be faithful for your wife for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, you could be faithful to that wife in front of your children. No other woman in a bedroom, no other bedroom but your wife. But when you oogle and google and goggle and, and sweat and, and, and foam and, and, and slavitate over other women, or even your internet or your magazines, and your children know it, listen, 
I was a child one time. I found my parents' nudie books. So when I was able to get nudie books, what did I do with my nudie book? I did exactly what my parents did. I hit them. Abraham says, Sarai, you love me? Yes, I love you. Please tell me you're my brother. Okay. Sarai, we're, you know, we're going to these people. Will you tell them you're my brother? I'm my sister? Yeah, okay. Years and years later, Isaac comes up. He says, Rebecca, yeah, you love me? Yeah. You tell them you're my sister. Where did Isaac get that from? He got it from dad and mom. Was it Emmon, David's son, who who raped his, his, his sister? You say, well, where did he get that from? Well, David took a woman that wasn't his, Bathsheba. See, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. We teach our children rebellion. There are Christians out there. They're waving the King James Bible and a rebel southern flag. Rebel southern flag? Rebel? Is that really biblical? We're a Christian Baptist King James 1611 rebel flag. Really? I'm going to get me a gun and I'm going to shoot somebody. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll shoot them no matter. You're promoting murder. Well, I'm defending my house. Yeah? What happened to faith in God? What about trusting in God? You're not te you're teaching your children trust in the gun and not in God. Teaching your children to max out your credit cards. You're not teaching them a way of budgeting. Well, you know, style, I've got it in hand. I, I got it controlled. But do you know your children will have it in hand and have it controlled? How many people have ended up in an addiction atmosphere, whether it be alcohol addiction, tobacco addiction, drug addiction, or even anger management, unfaithful to their spouse and children? And when you look back at the history, it's not the public school, it's not television, it goes back to mom and or dad. Well, you know, you know, during the church, the children they grow up, they, they don't give money to the church. Why? They see mom and dad put nothing in the plate. Now, I don't brag, but uh, with my children, I say, listen, I give this much and more, and I support these missionaries. I told my daughter the other day, I took on two new missionaries. There is something I don't do with my money, it's none of your business, but I told my daughter why I don't do that with, with my Lord's offering. And I gave her the true reason, which I believe honestly is approved of God. I think I have four mission, five missionaries, six missionaries. My children know that. Oh, you know, my children grew up, they don't read your Bible. Have they ever seen you read your Bible? Or is it Sunday morning that your children watch you? Where's my Bible? Where's my Bible? I don't know where my Bible is. Somebody, you see where my Bible Where's my Bible? My children don't pray. Did they ever hear you pray?
How come my children don't want to go to church, but they want to go to entertainment thrill land? And they want to go to roller coaster land. They want to go to castle land. They want. Where was your goal? You know, hey, can't wait to May. May we, our, our vacation's coming. We deserve to go to X Y Z. Today's a thing in an unsafe world. Lord forbid if it's in the, in the, the safe world. There's a thing, you know what? You don't have to get married. Just, just sleep with anybody you want. And then when it gets tired and all that, you, you just move on to the next one. And you got a generation of children who don't know who their parents are. And there are a generation of children who don't even know and could not ever know who their father was. And there's even a worse generation where even the mother doesn't even know who the father would have been. There's so been so many. And there's even the law I, re I read the other, the other night. Thou shalt not prostitute thy daughter. There are families out there who are teaching their little girl on how to sell herself sexually. As an income. Oh, why does my daughter have all these diseases? And there's another thing that goes on. And this is television, but this goes with the parents. These virtual contest programs. You know, you get up and sing, you get up and and, and perform. You you have magic. You you can train apes, or you can jump through hoops, or you can spell the most. And 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 there there are parents that will get their girls. It's, it's a lot with the girls, and they'll put them in the most perverted sexual prostitute or outfits so they can entertain thousand hundred to get a trophy or get a check prostitute whore mom involved Another thing would be when the parents cheat on their taxes and they brag about it. I know a couple people who cheat on their taxes because they brag about it. And then you wonder why your children cheat. And lie and deceive and steal. And you thought only politicians who use car salesmen do that. No, there are children who learned it from my. Now, listen, a lot of the times, mom and dad, mom, <coughs> mom and or dad has taught that child. Unwillingly. And what I mean is that parent has a sin and they do it and they don't mean their children to do it. They want the best for their child. We talked about this uh, last month. But their child picks up on the sin and the wrongness of the conduct of the parent. More than, the, I mean, that parent may want the best. And the good of that child, and that child is going to pick up a bad trait, a bad habit. It happens. But there is a lot of parents out there, Lord forbid, if they're saved, they are prone and to teaching junior, and I'll use a biblical word, to sin. And they don't even think it's wrong. They don't even think it's evil. I have seen grown men, fathers, give their children a joint. I've seen it. I have seen parents allow their children 
to have no authority for somebody else or even somebody older than him. I have seen parents teach their children, I don't care. What are you going to do about it? I have seen parents with a child screaming and hollering at a toy store or a candy store. And then in the long run, that child gets what he cried baby about. I see one time a kid was acting up. I thought it was, I forget which store we were in. I think it was back in Connecticut. That mother grabbed that child out of, this, out of that out of that carriage seat. She said, "I'm I'm taking home. We're going to take care of you, and then we'll then we'll come back." But it was so funny because the store associate came up and said, "Told the woman, he took the care. I'll put the carriage over there when he comes back." I'm like, whoa. I like that. And mama did business. Amen to mama. But there's a lot of mamas and there's a lot of daddies who don't do business. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to count to ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm at ten. You want me to do it again? I'll make you go sit in a corner. Whoopie do. When I was in school, you had to sit. In, we didn't wear a dunce hat, but we had to. We had to sit in a corner at school. That didn't, didn't do me no good. We had to write on the on the chalkboard. I will not. You know what I learned to do. I, 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 I will, 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 will. Not, 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 not. And then <laughs> it didn't do me no well. I'll tell you one thing. Let me. I don't know if it has anything to do with. It, but let me tell you something. There's only a couple times in, in my grammar school. It was Cole Hansy School. And the principal was uh, Morgan, Mr. Morgan. There's only been a couple times I was ever in his office. Surprised not more. That guy, not him, put fear in a little boy. He say, well, how, how do you put fear and not put fear in? That man had above his head on a wall, he had a paddle that said the Board of Education. And the two or three times I was in his office, I look at that board and I wonder, will he use it? I know. I, two or three times I was in his I used to be in his, his assistant principal's office, Mr. Eccleson. Three times it was enough to go to the big man. And... Mom had a hard time with me with spelling. Mom drilled into me spelling. And when when I got my test back and I gave it to mom and I failed or did a D, mom did not blame the English teacher. Mom blamed me. Unless mom, my mom, talk about my mom. She said, you know what, you really, really try. You know, sometimes you bomb out and, you know, your mind just goes blank. Nowhere at no time did my parents blame the teachers, at least in front of Stiley. Nowhere did mom and dad, for whatever reason, give the police a hard time. Now, I know somebody in my family always gave the cops a hard time, always had a problem with the law. Always, had And what we're looking at here, this is the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. When, I hope you not say, but I, I, I'm not gullible, because I am preaching to the lost, and I am preaching to the same. When you teach your children wrong, whether you know you're doing it, or you're purposely doing it, God is going to hold mother and or father accountable to their child and the thing is that child will probably teach their children and their children may teach their children that's just as worse as the catholic church we talked about yesterday 
I know of generations, three, four, maybe five generations, from where my dad hanged out, lobstermen. Grandpa, dad, son, grandson would be into womanizing sex, gambling, alcohol, and tobacco, and Lord forbid, whatever else I didn't know. I thank God that one of the sins that I grew up was not adultery and fornication. Physically, I was faithful to my wife Lisa and I was faithful to my wife Tracy. You see, physically, I'm a man, my mind runs. Matthew 5:28. But there are things that I've done in my life that dad taught me. There are things I've done in my life mom taught me. They didn't want to teach me. They didn't think they were teaching me. They didn't have any ambition that my son's going to grow up and do this. But Sally grew up smoking, drinking, playing the lottery. I even learned something new my parents didn't do. I learned how to do drugs. I learned how to smoke marijuana. I was involved in crack. I used to race my car. I was an idiot. And there are other things in my my life. I'm not even gonna talk about because it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. And there are things I've done in my life. I think about the people that were involved. I wonder today if I ruined their life. I wonder if they're without hope, without Jesus Christ at this moment right now, and they've been perverted thanks to Stiley. You see, when you sin, you carry baggage. Oh, God will forgive you. God will cleanse you. And there's, there's one thing wrong about Pilgrim's Progress, you know, that weight came off his shoulder at Calvary. But the memories stay in here. And when you bring up, you can tell the devil, you can tell, so, hey, listen, it's under the blood. Now, not Stiley Haver, but let me give you a circumstance. You got a saved person, and they lived a, a, a wicked life, they got saved. It's under the blood of Jesus Christ. So now that it's saved, I don't have to worry about it no more. Okay? Well, one day, I'll get it. Hi. Well, who are you? Hi, Dad. You remember that woman that you, that you slept with that you were involved? Well, and then you didn't get back together. You didn't see each other any longer. Well, I was a part of that relationship that you had. I always tell people, you know, whether you're saved or lost, if you chop off your arm and throw it away, oh, I got saved. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. Uh, Christ has forgiven me. Uh, Why does my arm grow back? It don't grow back. And there are things that parents will teach their children, knowingly or unknowingly, that will hamper that child for the rest of their life. Now, you may be in control. You may have. But we need to learn. There is no private sin. Sin affects others and more that you would think that it affects don't believe me all right couple couple more things we'll done one time there was a man and a woman and they ran around naked 
And they had all kinds of fun. And he loved her and, and, and she loved him. And things were just great. They had free food, free water, free housing. They slept outdoors and everything was great. They even had God come up, walking up to him, say, hey, how you guys doing? Come on, let's sit on this rock and let's, let's talk. I can imagine times when God walked up and, you know, this husband and wife, they would giggle. Hey, I see God. And one day, God showed up. He says, Adam, Adam, where are you? I'm hiding. Why aren't you, why on earth are you hiding? Because I'm naked. Who told you you were naked? You see, well, we sin, God. We rebelled against the word. Rebel. Remember that flag? Southern flag. Rebel. We rebelled against the word of God. What's the word of God? Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the, of the fruit. Of the, thou shalt not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They ate that fruit. That's rebelling against the word of God. And if you don't think sin has a consequence. Next chapter one. One quarter of the population is murdered. And another man comes up marrying two wives like the Mormons, and he's bragging, did he really, how did he kill that guy? And murder? Or was, he's bragging about killing somebody. And you run the, the, the sin of rebellion against the word of God, of Adam and Eve, and today you got prisons that are overfilled and overstuffed. Courts that have got a log that you could never get fixed and up to date. You got people who hate the police and want to get rid of the police. You got intoxication and alcohol dependency. You got people who are addicted. And can't stop smoking. You got a drug crisis. And so far, you know, you get idiot. Well, we'll just legalize it. You got stupid people. You got hospitals. And bills. And pain and suffering and graveyards and death. Homeless people, rich people who, who screw the poor people. You got employers who swindle their employees. You got employees that steal from the employer. You got people who outright reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because one rebellion against the word of God, Adam and Eve. Don't ever say my sin doesn't hurt anybody. Now, if you're a Christian and you've heard this video, you may want to get off by yourself and talk to God. Because you may not see You may have to go to your pastor and a good friend at church and say, let me pull you off the side for a moment. Do you see any trouble with my children? Be honest with me. More so, do you see something in my children that I do? That they ought not be doing. That I ought not to be doing. Or maybe I'm supposed to be doing. I don't see your children reading your Bible. Do you read your Bible? Well, no. Or you need to get reading your Bible. We never see your children pray. Uh, do you pray? Uh, you need to get praying. 
Well, we heard your child tell some some kind of perverted joke. Where did they come from? Well, I don't. Oh, yeah, okay. Before we blame, and television's at fault. Don't get me wrong. Television's at fault. The best television is underwater. Plugged in. And, yeah, there's troubles in the schools. There's problems with the teachers. Yep. I agree with you. There are bad police officers as well. There's good police officers. I don't think the judges have a personal vendetta, but they may. But let's run to one source. You, the mother or the father of that child. You know, coming up this Sunday is Mother's Day. And there are going to be churches who are going to give whatever gifts to all the mothers of that church. I'm going to be frankly honest. This is why people hate me. There is a mother in the church this Sunday somewhere is going to get a gift from the church. And that woman does not deserve a gift. That woman doesn't even deserve the title to be mother. Or what she's teaching and dragging her children into. God's not pleased with her, and God's not pleased with her children, but the church gave her a Mother's Day gift. Whoa. Woe on to the church that does that. You know, it's easy to be a parent. Let's get a man and woman together sexually. Liberty says you can go to bed with the opposite sex, married or unmarried. Liberty says that. God calls a man and woman that are married the marriage bed. God calls a man and woman who's not married fornication. God calls a spouse that sleeps with another person that's not their spouse adultery. There's liberty. But you see, there's a statue missing in New York Harbor. That statue is called Responsibility. Now that statue is not in New York Harbor next to Lady Liberty. No, it's not. That statue is the, the judgment seat of Christ for Christians and the great white throne judgment for the lost. What and how did you handle your liberty? 